In 1947, Tour Heyerdahl found himself in Peru, floating down the river Palenque on 12 big balsa logs. He had set out to build a balsa wood Inca raft. Heyerdahl wanted to sail with the Humboldt current from Callao to Polynesia. For the first time in hundreds of years, the bearded face of Contiki, the sun god, was revealed. For his crew, he had chosen four fellow Norwegians and one Swede. After they had left shore and the towboat waved them goodbye, the small crew felt the power of the Humboldt current. They were on their way west toward Polynesia, the same route the Indians of South America might have traveled in ancient times. And a parrot had signed on as a seventh member of the crew. Heyerdahl was convinced that South American Indians could have reached Polynesia on balsa wood rafts. Now he was about to test this controversial theory. Once a part of the current, the men adapted to the situation and soon learned how to handle the raft and keep a steady course. The Humboldt Current is a giant, powerful river of salt moving in one direction. One was when uh, Hermann Watzinger made a false step uh, as, uh, at the beginning of the storm. He's sleeping there, fell overboard, and he fell into the sea. And uh, before anybody could grab him or he could grab the steering oar, a big wave had lifted him in one direction and us in another. And uh, my first thought when I came out was that I heard the shouting to throw up the life uh, belt in a rope, but the wind blew it back on board again. And uh, then Thorstein and I tried to put out the little the rubber dinghy. And we knew that when we jumped in there, we'd never catch up with the raft again, but we would pick up uh, Hermann uh, Watzinger. And uh, that's when uh, Knut Haugland acted before he gave any thought to anything. He just grabbed the life belt and jumped overboard and swam holding it. So uh, that's the only time uh, not only on the, the trip, but in all my life, that I afterwards was sh felt my knees shivering. Would have been horrible to have lost uh, one man. They had brought on board enough food and water for 100 days. But they need hardly have bothered. With fresh rainwater and a varied supply of fish from the sea, there was no danger of starvation. In minutes, they could catch enough food for several days. One day, a whale appeared and began to swim alongside the raft as though it was happy for a bit of company. And for this, they were grateful. The great whale could have upended the Contiki raft with just one movement of its powerful tail. They needed to be in the water, both to check the raft's underside and to do some washing. And sharks were always close by. During the whole voyage, they never met another vessel. Occasionally, they would inflate a balloon with a radio arrow attached to it. This was their only connection to the modern world. Life seemed as timeless as the ocean surrounding them. Well, I can tell you this, that all of us that had spent uh, 101 days on a raft in touch with sea and water, we felt as we were part of the universe. We, uh, we uh, cities and nations were not there. We were uh, human beings and there was uh, our uh, planet and the universe. It uh, was a very, very strange uh, feeling that I know all my men, it, it, it gave us a lot, it made us feel very, very modest uh, on this uh, enormous space that we have around us. And we understood that uh, uh, we were very unimportant and even the whole planet and the whole setup. They were accustomed to sharks, but one day a specimen of extraordinary proportions visited. 
it was the rare whale shark, the largest known mammal in the world. More than 60 feet long, it circled the raft for over an hour until one of the crew members could stand it no more and hurled a harpoon at its head, which sent the creature diving into the deep ocean. At the end of July, after three months at sea, they saw the first sign of land. A bird. It seemed that their goal was about to be realized. A few days later, they heard the unmistakable sound of surf hurling itself at the reef surrounding an atoll. Whatever happened now, they knew that they had succeeded. They had crossed the ocean from South America to Polynesia in 101 days. But now they were confronted with the most dangerous obstacle of the entire voyage. The current steadily transported them toward the reef, where the raft could be crushed to pieces by the ferocious surf. are enormous. They come all the way from South America and always with one direction. So when they hit the reef, the uh, vertical surf was higher than the top of the mast. And we were just like uh, little ants. I think most of the men saved their lives by crawling into the bamboo hat, which collapsed on top of them. Uh, but a couple of us were hanging in the ropes, and it's almost a miracle that uh, we were washed uh, back on board again because we hang on to the ropes. And uh, that was a nightmare. I can really, uh, I, I'll never forget that moment. The crew had managed to hang on to the raft, which was thrown 60 meters up onto the reef. Contiki lay stranded, but nobody was hurt. The crisis was over. They could gather their belongings. They had reached land. It was so fantastic to wade ashore uh, through the... We were washed all the way up on the reef and we could wade up and, and uh, put our feet in dry, warm sand and walk on something that was stable after 101 days. So that was like coming straight from, from hell to heaven and with white birds flying above us and coconut palms. And that, I, I'll never forget that either. They had accomplished what they had set out to do, prove that the first people to settle in Polynesia could have come from South America. The Contiki expedition was over, but for Tour Heyerdahl, it was only the beginning of a lifelong quest.